Hi there, Dread Central audience, and uh, it's very nice to meet you. Um, my name's Tom Hamilton, and um, I'm the director and co-producer of Boris Karloff, The Man Behind Monster. So yeah, we're here today to talk and to celebrate your documentary, Boris Karloff, The Man Behind the Monster, which is on Shudder. I was wondering, where did your interest in Boris Karloff begin? Uh, well, I've, I've always been a, I mean, I've always been a fan of, uh, of, of older films and older film actors. And uh, Boris Karloff is one of those people that has always fascinated me because, you know, he has such a, a great long career um, stretching, you know, really from the 1920s all the way through to the end of the 60s. But I should add, Josh, that I didn't start this project. Um, the person that actually started this uh, was my co-producer, Ron McCluskey, mm -hmm. which he liked. And he emailed me and he said, um, I liked your film on, on it was on Leslie Howard, mm -hmm. uh, Gone with the Wind. And he said, would you be interested in making a documentary on Boris Karloff? I know Sarah and I know a, a number of other people. And I was really looking for a project at that time. Uh, I, was, I was trying to do something else in, in the UK, but it wasn't going too well. And... Um, and when he said Boris Karloff, I was like, I've always loved Boris Karloff. Why, why wouldn't I want to do a documentary on him? It was, you know, it, there was no convincing involved. It was just, you know, it was everything I said to you a few minutes ago that I thought, well, it's this marvelous career. He is the whole of horror cinema in America up till the late 60s. And I thought this is going to be a lovely thing to do. And that was really the start of it for me. And I just, um, and, and one of the things I thought was, well, you know, we've got this opportunity there enough people around that still, you know, that remember working with them. I thought we can do something that's really a, a full, fully detailed film, you know, where you, you, you hear the people that were actually there saying, you know, Boris did this and that. And it's not just, you know, a bunch of talking heads that never met the man. And so I thought that would be a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to bring those films that he made to life for a newer audience. Because I think, you know, there's it's very easy to think, oh, these films were made 80, 90 years ago. They're, they're, they're no relevance now. Um, but I beg to differ. I think, I think these films stand up. And, you know, and, and one of the things I like that you guys are doing, or Shudder are doing, is that they've, uh, they're running the documentary along with some other films that he made. Um, some of the things like Black Sabbath and The Black Cat, mm -hmm. of course, the Frankenstein movies. And uh, this is wonderful because it means that people can will get a taste of these films in our documentary and, mm -hmm. and also find something out about Boris himself. And then they can go and immediately see the films themselves, which I think, you know, he's going to be getting a lot of new fans, I think, from people tuning in to see those films. Yeah, I think so, too. I revisited Bride of Frankenstein for this and I forgot how beautiful that film was. Mm -hmm. um, but for people that, like me, where our main references might be the Frankenstein series, yeah, what would be your recommendation to start get, digging a little deeper? What would be your first, your first selections? I, I would, I would definitely go for the Black Cat, because, for one thing, he is so very different in that mm -hmm. than than the monster in, in Frankenstein. The monster in Frankenstein is very sympathetic. You, you, you love that character, especially in Bride of Frankenstein. He's kind of, he's quite heartbreaking in that, in places. The black cat is the entire other side of the coin. <laughs> and he is, he is chilling in that, you know. Yeah. I mean, he, he keeps, he keeps his, his ex-girlfriends, you know, pinned up on the wall downstairs. I mean, it, it doesn't get much sicker than that. Yeah. And um, even in the, I mean, considering it's even a 30s film. So I think that film's a, a marvelous one to go into. And also, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good introduction to Bill Lugosi because Bill Lugosi was never better than in that film. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I would say um, definitely The Old Dark House is, is a treat. I mean, Karloff isn't the show in The Old Dark House. It's that sense of humor and that real kind of black edge to everything. And that's, of course, James Whale. So mm -hmm. there's that great connection as well. So people get a chance to see what James Whale was doing. And, um, and then Black Sabbath, because Black Sabbath is stunning. Uh, it looks real scary. My yeah. only introduction is what I've seen from your documentary. 
and it mm. looks like one of the scarier films in his library. Would you say that's true? Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, he's not in the whole film. He, mm -hmm. he, he introduces um, three different stories and he's in the story about the vampire, or the word Verdelac. And, um, but yeah, I think, I think he's very frightening in that. I was gonna ask, so is that the one where he plays a grandfather that comes back from the grave? Yes. Could you give us a little bit of a description in case our audience may not be aware? Okay, it's 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 set in it's set in Russia, um, in the the nineteenth century, and it's about this peasant family, and there's this um, there's this story that there's a a vampire out in the countryside, and he's he's killing people and killing animals and everything, and and Boris is their grandfather. He's this very sort of upstanding peasant grandfather and he goes out um to 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 kill to hunt down and kill the verdelac and he tells his family if i don't return by midnight on this particular day then you know that that he got me that that, that i've been taken over and midnight comes and boris doesn't come back but just after the stroke of midnight we see him emerging from the mist with this head in a bag, which is the Verdelax head. And uh, and uh, he, he's there's something very strange and very different about him because he's not he's not interested and in, he seems very detached and and his skin has an odd sort of green hue to it. He looks really horrible. Yeah. Uh, and then and then when he's when he's with the family, he's 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 really got a strange attitude towards his children. You know, he's he's like He's like, give me my grandchild, and it's you know, you know, he wants to kind of possibly consume it, cool. and uh, yeah. So I think I think it's a it's a great one. Yeah, um, yeah. One I'm going to be favorites. checking that one soon. You, you um, have to, and there's another really good story in it that, although Karloff isn't in it, uh -huh. it's really terrifying. Can you um, give me a bit of a tease on what that one is? Yeah, it's um, it's called it's called the Dripping Tap, and um. And it's basically this this very nasty woman wants to um, is looking after this old woman who's in a bed, mm -hmm. crippled, and uh, she I uh, shouldn't say that I should say she's bed bound, and um, the uh, she just wants her money, and and the old woman dies, but then maybe she's not dead. Uh oh. And and it's absolutely think the ring, uh -huh. terrifying level. That's up we're there. talking we're talking that level of of you know when you just grab your chest and you go oh my god mm -hmm. so it's a very good one um you mentioned earlier that one of the reasons this project maybe got off the ground is you had access to boris karloff's daughter who appears throughout the film what was it like getting to know her and talking to her oh it's amazing i mean she's uh you know she was she was so welcoming when um, I, the first time I spoke to her was actually by accident and I, I, I dialed the wrong number. I had her number in my phone and I was <laughs> meaning to talk to her, but I, you know, we'd said, oh, I'll talk to you tomorrow or the next day. So I, I rang thinking I was about to speak to someone else okay. <laughs> and I'm chatting away, <laughs> introducing myself. And she says, oh, oh, Thomas, yes, I've heard of you. You're <laughs> making the film about my dad. Oh, and oh. Um, it was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, she was she was great, and um, she was very pleased that that you know we were going to do this, and um, and also of course you know she'd been waiting to see it happen for for a long long time, and um, and I think when she saw the, the way I was going about it, the way we were actually finding everyone that we could, yeah, and interviewing them, and she actually helped. She set up the very first interview for us, uh, which was in actually in England because um because i live in the uk obviously and she said um boris's best friend who took him to cricket matches for over 20 years in england mm. lives in london and she said I'll, I'll 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 give him a call and he can he, you can interview him and so he was the first guy i interviewed and his name is bernie coleman mm -hmm. and and he had marvelous stories about just hanging out with boris karloff is there anything and, that didn't make the cut that maybe you could give us a peek? There in? was so much that we that didn't make the cut. I mean, okay. I, I got to be honest, we were planning a four hour film. And mm -hmm. so we interviewed over 50 people. And, and you know, when you get that 
when you get down to it with the editing, you, you end up you lose a lot of people. Um, yeah, I could. If, when you say a bonus, do you mean something we could attach to the program or, or something you just want me to tell you? Oh, just anything that comes to mind that maybe I wouldn't have seen in the film. Mm. OK, um, well, one of the things that because um, I'm actually we're actually putting out a Blu-ray DVD in April, which is is going to have the film and also a bonus film which is basically everything we didn't get into the film, which is over 90 minutes. And one of the things that it has is an interview with his co-star from Son of Frankenstein, oh. Donny Donegan, the little boy in Son of Frankenstein. And, mm -hmm. and he has some great stories about, about what it was like working on that film with, with Boris Karloff and how he and Boris Karloff would play checkers um, between takes and... Um, yeah, no, the, he had a great relationship with, and was not frightened, even when he first met him. He just, yeah. you know, it was, the charm of Boris was, was such mm -hmm. that the, the children were not terrified of him in the makeup. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you know from the film itself, um, the little girl Maria in yes. Frankenstein, she absolutely adored him, you know? Yes, I mean, he seems kind of like a big teddy bear. There are photos of him with dogs on set. It seems like he was mm. a really, lovely guy yeah yeah that, that that does that's definitely um what i've found um one of the things that i really had to struggle a little bit with on the film was i didn't want it to get too mushy mm -hmm. um i was very concerned that it would just become you know he's lovely he's lovely he's lovely and you know so i i really tried to kind of pull it back in the narration so that you know, you get a sense of his place in history and the, the films and the importance of the work and, yeah. you know, not, not just get lost in, in his personality. I think maybe sometimes people are a little surprised that he was such a nice guy because he played mm. such scary monsters. I was surprised that he was the voice of the Grinch. This is true. Oh, yes. yes. What would you say people are most surprised by in this documentary? Because there are a couple of moments that I would never have guessed. I think I think the Grinch is 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 a big surprise. Yeah. Um, I think one of the other surprises is uh, when you see him singing in this TV <laughs> show in the fifties, mm -hmm. and he's really enjoying himself. Yeah, and he's you good. You can see, yeah, he's 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 got a pretty good voice <laughs> yeah. as well, little darling, and yeah. and the fact that that was the thing that influenced you know Boris Billy Pickett or Billy Boris Pickett to uh, to do the song a few yes. years later. Was that the Monster Mash that the he monster was inspired mash, yeah. a few years later? That's some yeah. pretty crazy origins right there. I know, I know. And there, you know, there is also on YouTube, you can find this little clip of Boris Karloff actually performing the Monster Mash. I mean, he would deserve it, you know. Yeah, but he was the game. original monster. Yeah, he was game. That's the thing about Karloff yes. that's really, you know, very likable about him. Um, other things that people would find surprising, mm -hmm. I think. Um, well, I mean, obviously, the Body Snatcher is 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 a great film. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, the Val Luton one, mm -hmm. and um, and just the way he's so so charming in that, and yet he's a really dangerous guy. I I, I like when he's playing scary. He yeah. says in the documentary, or someone says that he feels as though Val Newton saved his career. Why do you think yes. that is? Well. This is a little bit to do with the way films were going, gen horror films were going generally in the 40s. Um, I mean, Universal had made these wonderful films in the 30s, Black Cat, first three Fra um, Frankenstein movies, and a bunch of others without Karloff as well. Mm -hmm. By the 40s, uh, there was a different regime at Universal, and, and their attitude to horror was, let's get out as many of these as possible and, and make money from them. Nothing wrong with that. But, but the art suffered a little bit on the way, you know. So, so the, the films that you see from the 40s tend to be um, more, more like B-movies. than Formulaic, the, maybe? A little bit more formulaic. Yeah. yeah. Still great fun. And, mm. um, but say The House of Frankenstein is so different from The Bride of Frankenstein or Son of Frankenstein. Straight off, you know Boris Karloff is a bad guy in this. Mm-hmm. You know, the first thing he does is strangle someone. So, so there's no question nuance, about that. Yeah. yeah, a little less. But um, little, yeah. And then, and then of course, you know, it's, it's like, you know, he meets all the other monsters. Mm -hmm. You know, he meets Dracula. He meets the Wolfman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and finally he gets together with the Frankenstein monster. And um, 
and and Karloff was he he was he he viewed it as a monster clam bake. That was what he called it. It's not wrong. Yeah. So <laughs> you know when when someone like uh, Val Luton came up with something that was really of high quality, mm. I, I think he he felt oh this is something I can really get into in performing. You know? And he was older by then, correct? Yeah, he was in his late fifties by then. Yes, yeah. and and he was having a lot of back problems as well, which was mm. you don't see it on screen, but it was it was causing a lot of issues for him. Yeah, it shut down one of the films, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, the Body Snatcher. Um, mm. Well, he was doing a film called The Isle of the Dead, right? And um, and he simply couldn't continue. He, right. he he was like he would go on, he would perform a scene and sit and, and be in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And it just got worse and worse. And so he went to hospital and after he'd recovered, he, he did the body snatcher and then he went back to the Isle of the Dead, which I think is a, a wonderful film as well. I'm, I'm very interested in it because you, you show the portrait that it's based on in the film and it's so mm. scary and it's so beautiful. Yeah. Is yeah. it a real place or is it yeah. fully fictional? It is real. Uh, it is a real place. I yes. have to know more. Yeah. yeah it looks it's, it, scary. It, it does, doesn't it? It's very, mm -hmm. very eerie. And the, and the picture, the poor, the painting itself, there's about seven or eight versions of it. Uh -huh. and, and, the, and they're kind of different levels of disturbing. So, so what happens in that film? If you could give us a little bit of a rundown. The Isle of the Dead is, yeah. is basically, it's set during, I think, a, one of the Balkan Wars. Mm -hmm. and, um, but the war is interrupted by a plague. Boris is this general who is sort of assigned the task of of looking after this island where it appears there may be plague occurring. Mm -hmm. So so he's put in charge of, of everyone and um, he comes to this house and he realizes that one of the people there has got the plague and it is so infectious uh -oh. that it's like it's like lockdown. I was going to say it sounds relevant as ever. Incredibly, relevant. yeah, yes. Um, um, okay, to switch gears just a little bit, I'm wondering what's yeah. your relationship with the other classic Universal monsters? Did you visit? Re, did you visit those films as a child, or were they sort of? Oh, I was watching them. Yeah, um, I used to yeah. as as a twelve and thirteen years old. They used to in England. They used to show these films at the weekends. Yeah, and um, you'd get the double bill. Mm -hmm. You get a Universal. And you get a hammer, and mm -hmm. so so you got to see the what to me then was old and new, you know, yeah. because the, the hammers were quite new then, uh -huh. and uh, and I vastly preferred the Universal films. Oh, why? Um, I liked I liked the music, mm -hmm. I liked the acting. I mean, I, generally, I I I just liked those people like Bela, Boris, people like Lionel Atwell. You know, mm -hmm. who, who could always be relied on to to be doing something, you know, bad, and um, and also this general thing that you never quite knew what was going to happen in some of those better Universal films because they were really discovering this territory for the first time. I mean, mm -hmm. something like The Raven with Boris and Bela, that's an insane movie. <laughs> Bela Lugosi um, is 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 this mad surgeon. Who um, he basically he, he he wants to marry this this young this young lady, um, but uh, he's he's deprived of this opportunity. You know they won't let him, and uh, he becomes in, insane with revenge for for everyone that he feels has has you know picked on him. Uh -huh. Boris Karloff is this escaped murderer who who comes to him and pleads for him to. Give me a new face, he says. People hate me. They hate my face. He's he's kind of bearded and, and sort okay. of a bit rough looking. And he says, you know, you know, people see my face and they're nasty to me and that makes me kill. Give me a new face. And Bill goes, he says, Okay, I'll give you a new face. And what does he do? He gives him this hideous face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like his eyes sort of stand and all this. And and, and Bill Lugosi sort of opens this this window and looks in when Karloff wakes up and sees himself in the mirror. And Karloff is like horrified and Bill Lugosi is just like ah! <laughs> That sounds wild uh, and scary. <laughs> it's a it's a fun, it's a fun film and and it kind of ushered in a lot of censorship as well because it was like the censors were just what we're we're not tolerating this kind of <laughs> depravity this is this is not fit for for American audiences you know mm -hmm. that was one of the things we wanted to get 
across also in in the documentary was kind of the history of horror mm -hmm. and 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 the way it, it sort of reflects what's going on in the rest of culture you know because you've got censorship coming in and and that was to do with the, the kind of sort of religious fervor that occurred in the mid 30s and then you've got during the war when it was really a sort of escapist thing mm -hmm. and then right after the war when suddenly no one wanted to see these films anymore people were coming back from from you know hiroshima and things like that and they just were you know we want to see musicals we want to see westerns we don't want to see you know boris karloff and bill lugosi messing around in laboratories yeah and yeah, and it yeah. all went away you know kind of have to read the room to see how people are feeling yeah. Um, a part of the film that I found pretty tragic was yeah. how Boris Karloff felt about the death of the young girl in Frankenstein and how it seemed to really follow him oh, yeah. the rest of his life. Why do you think that haunted him the way that it did? Boris Karloff was, was a very sensitive guy. Mm. And he was sensitive to things like violence um, on screen and, and, and the portrayal of it. Performing that scene in, in Frankenstein, as you know, he, he fought with the director over it. I mean, yeah. up until that point, James Whale and Boris Karloff were in absolute agreement over how the part should be played. You know, they, they, they were really just a very great little team. But that day, Boris didn't want to throw the girl in, in, in the lake in, in this kind of brutal way mm -hmm. that, that um, James Whale wanted him to. But to James Whale, it was essential that that happened, even though the monster wouldn't do it viciously, it would still be something he would do because he would think she's a flower, she can float. Mm -hmm. um, and Boris, he fought it to the point that he performed it in a slightly different way yeah. than, than James Whale wanted, still somehow giving us some sort of sympathetic response to the monster because he's so confused. Definitely sympathetic, yeah. And it's a very powerful scene. It's very, but, it's very sad. Yeah, but he did it, as we said, under duress. Uh -huh. And then at the end of the day, the scene was cut. Mm-hmm. For but, which complicated years. it even further because then yes. it, it alluded to an even darker possibility. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit what that means? Yes. This this showed what censorship can sometimes achieve. Censorship, the the idea is to clean something up. To yeah. make it less offensive. Yeah. Um, in this, in the film, we see the monster playing with the little girl, throwing flowers with her in, in the water, and then he runs out of flowers, <laughs> and he 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 looks at his hands and he looks at the girl and he's like, ah, oh, she's a flower. Yeah. And and he reaches across and picks her, up, smiling all the time, and <laughs> throws her in in yeah. the lake, and of course she sinks. Mm -hmm. And then he gets very confused and upset and, and runs around trying to find what's happened to the little girl. Yeah. Now, that's how it was filmed. What they mm. did was they cut at the very moment that he reaches towards her. Yeah. And they, they, they cut away to, to a village scene with, you know, the, all the celebration going on because it's supposed to be a wedding. Mm. And then the next thing we see is Maria's father carrying her lifeless, bloodied body. By the way, it's all sort of, she's just, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's through the crowd. And what does an audience think? Not what good do to her? No. Yeah. And, and that's a huge mistake. But yeah. in a way, it makes the film even more powerful. Yeah, in us. a way, it's even more frightening. It's just an, an unhappy accident. To, Frank, to the monster's credit, that little girl did not try so hard to flow. And that's something that's always been on my mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you, 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 if you're living next to a lake, maybe you should learn to swim. Learn to swim, buddy. Um, yeah. Something I find interesting as a queer horror fan is yeah. I've noticed recently, especially, there's been some discourse online that people believe Bride of Frankenstein and Frankenstein may be queer coded based on um, James Whale and the way mm. that he was as a creative. Yeah. Do you think that there's a chance that's true, or do you think maybe we're reading a little bit too deeply into things? I, I, I can't see it so much in Frankenstein, mm -hmm. but definitely, definitely in Bride of Frankenstein. And, and it's also there in The Old Dark House. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, very camp humor okay. in The Old Dark House. And let's just yeah. take the, the character of, um, is it Horace Fenn? Ernest Femme, okay. uh, and, and he's played by the actor Ernest Thesiger, who is 
very camp. He also appears in The Bride of Frankenstein as Praetorius. And he's oh, this right. wonderful, wonderful character actor. Uh -huh. And um, and James Whale brought him over to Hollywood, especially for these films. Uh -huh. he, he never appeared in any other Hollywood films. So, <laughs> and and they they conferred and they, they, they built up little jokes and stuff like that. And, um, oh yeah, no, I think you're, you're absolutely correct. There's a huge, huge queer sensibility in uh, particularly The Bride of Frankenstein because of the way that they become these surrogate parents of this, The Bride of Frankenstein. It's, That's right. It's, it's, it's not particularly under the surface. I don't no, think. I think I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you've seen any of the more recent horror classic documentaries like Never Sleep Again or In Search of Darkness. Are there any other horror documentaries that maybe you would recommend? Gosh, um... I see, I see plenty of more current horror films. Oh, okay. I'm I interested mean, I'm, in that too. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Blumhouse films. Mm -hmm. I think, I think they are amazing um, in the way that they, in the way that they kind of, they have wonderful period detail, mm -hmm. great, great sort of story arcs and character studies, and real moments of terror, and very sophisticated films. You know, things like Get Out, things like that. Yes. Which just stunning, you know. Yes, and getting some Oscar attention finally for the genre. And deservedly, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, you could see that you could see that in the uh, in the Bloomhouse films, really from the beginning, that they mm -hmm. they, they were mm -hmm. offering something else, and there was a, a sensibility. And I I, I see, um, oh gosh, what is his name? Is it Daniel Bloom? Uh, no, um, Jason. no, it's not Jason Bloom. Thank you. Yeah, and Jason Bloom, I, I see. A kind of Val Luton type sensibility. I, you beat me to the punch. I was going to make that analogy myself. So thank you for bringing that up. How, why yeah. would you say that? Because of the way he, he, he will withhold things. Oh. You know, and, and, you know, just generating an atmosphere. Yes, the shocks are there. Yes, you know, the jump scares are there. But they're not the things that are thrust to the forefront. You know, you, you, you can watch his films for like half an hour. Um, there's a great film i think it's a bloom house called the duplic or the and it's about this box that's um that's mm -hmm. this old sort of hebrew um curse that's right yeah um that's a marvelous film the way it, it slowly builds up and it's a, it, it works through this little girl who's just very possessive about it and it, it completely sort of destroys this family almost that's yeah. that's a, a great film yes i, I like that, that over film. and over and as I'm a I'm a Jewish horror fan too, and it's rare mm. that we'll see Jewish folklore and horror. So that's one that always stuck with me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was wondering, what are you working on next? Is it, can we know what's next for you? Yes, certainly. The next one is Vincent Price. Wow. Yes, Great. yes. I'm actually in talks with his daughter wow. at the moment, and um, and the funny thing about this is that <laughs> she actually the one of the early days when we were filming Boris Karloff and I was at um, Chiller Theatre uh, back in 2018 and I was, you know, interviewing a few people there and Victoria Price had a stall near where Sarah Karloff's was mm -hmm. and Sarah introduced me to Victoria and Victoria said, why aren't you making a film about my fun? Good question. And, and I, yeah, exactly. I said, well, give me time <laughs> okay i'll get around yeah, to it yeah so so the, the day after we we premiered this in in last september uh, i reached out to her and said okay i've done boris now um i'd like to, I'd like to do something with you you know so that's it's a natural progression for sure i don't a little bit more modern which is going a little to be bit more modern and and you know we have you know he he, he reaches into the 90s and you got things like edward scissor hands and so you know you've got a lot more contemporary figures that, that worked with him which yes. i think is is exciting yeah he'll bridge both worlds which is really amazing and there's also some really interesting things about vincent price that that people don't generally know about oh. his um his activity with regards to the arts and um and helping he, he was doing things like he was helping communities you know local communities and um mm -hmm. like minorities stuff like that he got really? very yeah yeah he was very um a very interesting guy and i'm always happy for those um happy surprises those are oh. the ones we're looking for right now i like happy surprises <laughs> me well. I'm, too I'm, yes. i really want to that's something that 
Josh, that I really do want to do is is tell stories that show the best in humanity and, you know, encourage people to do likewise in their own lives. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't see a lot of it. So I think we'll be we'll be welcoming this. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm wondering to wrap things up, where yeah. can people find you online if they want to follow you um, and keep up to date with what you're with what you're doing? Okay, I am. Um, I have a Facebook uh, page, mm -hmm. and um, that's under my own name. But it's fairly obvious <laughs> it's it's the Boris Karloff man behind the monster. All right. There's, there's a there's a photograph of me being threatened by uh -oh. uh, the monster, which was uh -huh. actually taken outside Sarah Karloff's home, and uh, she has this seven foot sculpture of, of her father as the monster. Wow. So, um, so you'll see that, and um, IMDb, of course, you can mm -hmm. you can see what's going on there. But uh, I think as we get into the Vincent Price one, I'm I'm going to be upping my profile a bit because I think it's important to to let fans know what you're doing. Yeah. Because I think there's a real appetite for for these stories and to learn a bit more about these figures, and um, so that's something I really enjoy doing, and and I really enjoy talking to people about that as well. Well, I really hope that we'll get to talk again, especially for this next project, because yeah. I'm a fan. So well, thank great, you for Josh. talking with me today. This was really great. And I hope that everyone will check out Boris Karloff, the man behind the monster. And we'll uh, have to check out that Vincent Price documentary soon too, I hope. Hopefully hopefully sooner than three years from now, but yeah. <laughs> hey, as long as it takes, we'll be patient. Yeah. Okay, Josh. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.